Good morning, church. Happy New Year. It is a privilege to see all of you gathering together in the presence of the Most High God. We thank the name of the Lord for all he has done for us. We thank him for what he's doing for us, and we thank him for what he will do for us. I would like to uh, welcome all of you, our church members, and all our visitors. Um, is there anybody that is visiting us for the first time here in Rockford Church? Anyone visiting for the first time? Just raise your hands where you are. Anyone? Okay, so all of our visitors, they are not new to our church. Praise God for that. And we also want to uh, greet all of our friends who are watching us on, on Facebook and YouTube. I pray that the Lord um, give you a special blessing in a new song in 2022. Today, the title of our, of our sermon is, as you can see on the screen, The Reason for the Cross. The text that our elder just read to us, it's a um, well-known verse, as, as he mentioned, and some people call it uh, the gospel in a nutshell. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. For what reason? That whoever, what, believes in whom should not but have everlasting life. Let's pray. Everlasting Father, we, we thank you, Lord, because of your love for us. Thank you, Lord, because you put in our heart the desire to come to your presence, to hear your voice speaking through our heart. But we ask you today to uh, bless us in a way that you've never done before. Speak to our heart, Lord, so that our lives can be transformed. Our heart can be renewed. May we feel your presence among us this morning. May all the spirits that are not from you be departed from this place. May you take control of this sanctuary so that we can hear your voice and make a decision to follow you. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. On March 23, 1875, the Second Virginia Convention met at St. John's Church in Richmond, Virginia, to discuss the state's strategy against the British. It was there that Patrick Henry delivered his most famous speech to convince the colonists of Virginia to fight against England. He ended his speech with the quote, Give me liberty or give me death. And later on July 4th, 1776, the 13 colonies claimed the independence from England. Last Saturday, Haiti celebrated its national holiday, which commemorates its independence from France, and at the same time, the first abolition of slavery in human history. The Haitian slaves cried out, give me liberty or give me death. On January 1st, 1804, Haiti became the first black independent country in the world. Many African countries like Kenya, Uganda, Rwanda, they all had to fight for the freedom and finally became independent. From the Republic of Libya in 1847 to the Republic of South Sudan in 2011. Brazil fought for its freedom from the Portuguese in 1822. Argentina got its independence from Spain in 1816. The Dominican Republic got its independence from Haiti and Spain in 1844 and 1865, respectively. 
Jamaica stood up for its rights and became free from the British in 1962. This quick history lesson tells us that people had a thirst for freedom. This is because God created us equal and, and, and free in dignity and rights. You know what I mean? Chapter 10, verse 17 says, For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great God, mighty and awesome, who shows no partiality and accepts no bribes. Paul in Philippians 2, verse 8 says, But nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, rather in humility, value others above yourselves. God wants to liberate all human beings from slavery. He also expressed a great desire to save mankind from slavery of sin. And in order to perform that act of, of substitution, he sent his only son, Jesus, to die on the cross to give us eternal life. That's how much God loves us. That's how much God loves you and me. Love. Somebody say love. That's a word a lot of us use every day. Some of us use it occasionally, but some of us will never use it. At home, at church. And when we look in the scripture, we find that there are different kinds of love. The first kind of love that we find in scripture is Eros, which is a romantic love, the love of a husband for his wife, and vice versa. The second kind of love that we find in the Bible is philia, which means affection, friendship, and brotherly love. And there is another type of love that we encounter, which is storage. We find its opposite in Scripture in 2 Timothy 3, verse 3. It describes the love of a parent for a child and vice versa. Love of a sister for a brother. For example, the love of Martha and, and Mary exp that they expressed for the brother Lazarus. And the last type of love that we find in the Bible is agape. Somebody says agape. This is, in Hebrew, ahava. This is the unconditional love. This is the sacrificial love. Brother Marx, what is love? What, what is it? Love is the greatest attribute of the creator with respect to his creatures. Love is the controlling force in God's divine government. The Bible says that whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. The first point here regarding love we'd like to share with you is that God's love is awesome. God's love is incomprehensible. We can't really grasp the meaning of that love. We can't really fully understand it. Even the angels in heaven do not comprehend it. God's love for us is eternal. God's love for us is everlasting. God's love for us embraces all humankind, all nationalities, all people, rich, poor, black, white, Adventist, non-Adventist, gay, lesbian, politicians, thieves, alcoholic, because he died to save everyone. He died to save all mankind because he loves us so much. Love is part of God's character. Psalm 136, 26 says, Give thanks to the God of heaven for his love endures forever. Victor Hugo, one of, the, one of the greatest French writers, in one of his poems, he stated, Ceux qui vivent sur son ceux qui lutte, those who live are those who struggle. 
I, I understand um, his reflection about life when he stated that those who live are those who struggle. Life on earth can be painful. Life on earth can be hard and difficult. That's why many people are worried. Many people are, are fearful and even suicidal. But we don't have to live a life of defeat. Napoleon said, death is nothing. But to live defeated and inglorious is to die daily. He means that for him, living with the, with the shame of defeat and without the glory of victory is worse than death. In 2022, you need to make a decision to live a victorious life. In 2022, you and I, we need to make a decision to live a victorious life in the name of Jesus uh, by saying no to discouragement, uh, by saying no to hopelessness, uh, by saying no to pessimism, by saying no to despair, by saying no to depression, by saying no to hate, uh, by saying no to animosity, by saying no to prejudice, uh, by saying no to dishonesty, by saying no to unfaithfulness, by saying no to sin, we need to cry victory through the blood of the Lamb. Those who live or those who struggle said victory go. But as children of God, as children of the Most High God, yes, we are fighting, but we are fighting with hope that we have in God because He is our Father. He is our Deliverer. He is our stronghold. He is our refuge. He is our strength. Uh, the Bible says, do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand, says the Lord Most High. We are the apple of his eyes. God knows how many hairs we have on our head. Trust in the Lord with all of your hearts and lean not on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Now, what should be our response to God's love in our life? What should be our response to God's love in the life of our, of our family members? Our response is to, is to love him back and to love our neighbors. God's love in your life should create in you the desire to love each other. 1 John chapter 4, verse 11 says, For God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Because God loves us so much, because of his love for us, we are compelled to reproduce that kind of love in relation to other people. We need to reproduce that kind of love to other people, not to a group of people, not to certain people, not to people you like, not to people who look like you, not to people that you hate, but to all people. No matter who they are, no matter what they believe in, no matter where they come from, no matter how they dress, no matter the language they speak, no matter the social economic status, no matter who they marry, their political views. Because Jesus died for all of them. He created them in his own image as he created us. Since God so loved us sinners, Unworthy as we are, should not we love our neighbor who is a sinner like us? Many times as Christians, we, we love to say, Oh, I am saved because of the sacrifice of Christ in my life. I'm saved through the blood of the Lamb. Thank you, Jesus. Then you refuse to love not only people in the world, but you refuse to love your brothers and sisters in Christ. When you do that, you are being ungrateful to God who loves you. 
You may say in your mind right now that, um, Brother Marks, I love my neighbors. Thank you, Jesus. I don't have that problem. But what about those who hurt you? What about that person who told that lie about you? What about that person who told that lie and caused you to lose your job? What about that person who talked bad behind your back? What about that person that you cannot stand? What about that person who cursed you? What about that person that mistreated you at work? What about that person in your family that molested you? What about that person, your cousin, your, your, your father, your grandfather who molested you? What about him? What about her? Do you love him? Jesus was talking to his disciples regarding the true love in Matthew 5, 43. Jesus said that, you have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you today, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you that you may be children of God in heaven. He causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward do you get? You greet only your own people. What are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that? Be perfect. Therefore, as your heavenly father. To the Jews, a neighbor was a fellow Israelite, either by birth or by um, converting to Judaism. So the Jews, they consider as their neighbors only those who have the same religious views as them. And everybody else was considered strangers. There are some Adventist people that do not get along to people from other denominations just because they are, they are not Adventists too. And Jesus explains very well why we should love our enemies. It's because God loves them too. And because we are sons of God. That's the reason we ought to love one another. We ought to love our enemies. Verse 44 says, but I tell you, love your enemies. The word love in this text here from the Greek is agape. It's the sacrificial love. It's the unconditional love. In this verse, Jesus does not ask us to feel um, toward our enemies the same feeling, affection that we have for our family members. But he's asking you to agape your enemies. Look the person next to you, say, agape your enemies. Look the person next to you, say, agape your, en your enemies. To treat them with respect, to treat them um, the way God sees them, the way God regards them. Romans 12, verse 20 says, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them food to eat, uh, to drink. Uh, if they are hungry, give them food to eat. Uh, in doing so, you will heap burning coals on shame on their heads. By loving one another, you are proving that you are true disciples of Christ. True Christians are the ones that love. An authentic Christian does not think that he or she is superior to other people. For the Bible says that for those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. How can you say that you're serving the, the God of Abraham, Isaac, the God who saves you from your sin, the God who loves you despite of who you are, a sinner, and you think that you're superior to somebody else? And this is not the voice of God speaking to you when you make that statement. Whoever claims to love God and hates a brother or a sister is a liar. 
For whoever does not love the brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God. How can you love God? You can see him and you say you love your brothers and sisters. How can you love God if you cannot love them? You're able to see them. You interact with them at work, at school, at church. How can you say you love God if you don't love them? Jesus showed up for the ones who were forgotten. Jesus showed his love, his love for the people who were being marginalized, for those who were hurt, for those who can't speak for themselves. Jesus helped them and served them in a practical way. The last point we're going to see today regarding the love of God is the understanding that love means action. True love produces action. Words can be beautiful, but love is action. Love is an action word in the Bible. God's love acts. 1 John, 1 John 3 verse 18 says, Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. If a, guy, if a guy says to you, I love you, and then he does not want to marry you, this is not true love. If your father says, I love you, my son, I love you, my, my, my daughter, and he doesn't provide for you, this is not true love. Love produces action. Romans 5, 8 Paul is helping us to understand that God does not only say that he loves you, but he proves that he loves you through the way he acts. Romans 5 verse 8 says, But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. This is how God demonstrated his love for us. And my question for you, and, and the question is for myself as well, how do we demonstrate our love for our neighbors, how do we show our love for our brothers and sisters? Often we preach about love, we teach about love, we read books about love, we tell people to love other people, but we do not act with love toward your brothers and sisters. And what we learn from the Word of God is that we must practice what we preach. We must practice what we preach. Let me share a story with you. And the story will help you to understand this concept of Practicing what you are preaching. I read that story on somewhere. It goes this way. It says, an honest man was being tailgated by a stressed out woman on a busy boulevard. And suddenly the light turned yellow in front of him. He did the right thing, stopping at the crosswalk. Even though he could not even though he could have beaten the red light by driving through the intersection. But the tailgating woman hit the roof and, and the horn and screaming in frustration as she missed her chance to get through the intersection. Can someone relate to that? You want to go through the yellow light and somebody in front of you just stop because the light just turns yellow? And she screamed, she yelled, she was frustrated. As she was still waiting at the intersection, she heard a tap on her window. And she looked up in the face, into the face of a very serious police officer. And the officer ordered her to exit her car 
with her hands up. The officer took her to the police station where she was searched, fingerprinted, and photographed, and placed in a holding cell. After a couple of hours, the policeman approached the cell and opened the door. She was escorted back to the booking desk where the arresting officer was waiting for her with her personal items. The officer said to her, Ma'am, I am very sorry for this mistake. You see, I pulled up behind you while you were blowing your horn, flipping off the guy in front of you and cursing at him. But while you are doing that, I noticed the Choosing Life license plate holder behind your car. I noticed the What Would Do Jesus bumper sticker. I noticed the Follow Me to Sabbath School bumper sticker in your car. And he continued saying to the woman, Naturally, I assume that you had stolen the car. So this is to tell us that even the world expects us to practice what we preach. Now, how can we achieve that goal? There's a song in 287 that Steve is going to play for us. These, the words in this song help us to understand what we must do. Because God is calling each and every one of us. He's calling us to come to him daily. Whether you've been in church for two weeks, a year, or whether you've been in church for 30, 40, 50 years, God is calling you today. But you're still having that question in your mind. How can you achieve that goal? How can you fulfill that commandment that calls you to love? And the answer is simple. The answer is to abide in Christ. When you abide in Christ, you will be able to produce fruit because love is the fruit of the Spirit. Earlier today during the sermon, we said that our response to God's love should be for us to love Him back. This morning, how many of you want to say, Lord, I want to love you? Just raise your hands where you are. Amen. Now, Jesus is calling you and me. I remember Peter in the books of Acts, chapter 2. Peter said to all the people that were gathering there, he was preaching about the love of Christ, how Christ dies for sin, how God loves uh, the world that he sent his only begotten son. As pre Peter was preaching that sermon in Acts 2, and at the end of the sermon, he said, To all the people who are listening, that Jesus is waiting for them. Jesus is inviting them to make a decision. And the people there, they said to the apostles, what must we do? And Peter replied, repent from your sin and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Is there somebody today, this morning, who has not been baptized yet? You know the truth about God's love for you. And you wanted, you wanted to make that decision. But somehow, you are delaying your decision to follow Christ and to repent and get baptized. Today, the Lord is inviting you to accept his love for you. If that's your decision today to get baptized in the name of Christ. I want to ask you to just raise your hand where you are. If you want to get baptized and say, Lord, I trust in your name. I believe in you. I want to give you my life. I don't want to wait for tomorrow because I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. 
The time, the day to make the decision to follow Christ, to get baptized, is right now. You've been delaying this decision for many years. In 2022, Jesus wants to save you. If you know that's the right thing to do and you refuse to do it, you won't be able to take part in God's kingdom. That's why this morning he's inviting you to accept his sacrifice on the Calvary. Anybody here this morning that has not been baptized yet and would like to make a decision today to stand up for Christ, to get baptized? Anybody here this morning? Just raise your hands. Anybody? If you are shy, I can get up and help you, and we'll come back here on the stage to pray with you. Just raise your hands where you are. Anyone? All right, get up. Get up. Can you move forward? We're going to pray with you. Can you move forward? Can you come forward? Anybody else? Can you play a little bit louder? As we are singing 287, you can sing in your heart. You can sing, sing loud. The devil doesn't look at your age to attack you, to destroy your life. Whether you are young or old, is after you to destroy your life. And the only way for you to escape is to give your life to Christ. Not by words, but through action, through baptism. Anybody would like to get baptized this morning? Any young people, old? The devil is after our young people today. He's after the adults as well. None of us can escape the devil's trap unless you are abiding in Christ. Anybody else? Anybody else would like to baptize? Let's sing together, guys. Let's sing together. 287. Jesus is calling you today. Let's sing together, brothers and sisters. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling for you and for me. You and for me. At the heart's portals, He's Come home. You've been de delaying this decision for too long. It is time to stand for Jesus Christ. So he can stand for you. At his return. Anybody else would like to commit his life or her life to Christ? Just raise your hands. I'll come pick you up where you are. He died for your sin. And today is the day to give your life to Christ again. Why should we tarry when Jesus is pleading? Pleading for you and for... Why should we linger? Why should we linger and he not his mercy? Mercy for you and for me. We are going to close the appeal. One last time, I'd like to ask if there's anyone here this morning. The voice that is telling you not to stand up, to make a decision to follow Christ through baptism. That voice is from the devil. He wants to destroy your life today. Take the courage. Get up. We'll take your hands and bring you here. We'll pray for you and prepare you for baptism. Anybody here today? This is our last appeal. Anybody here today want to get baptized and follow Christ? Okay, the second appeal is for all of us.
have been baptized before and you like to recommit your life to Christ, you realize that you don't live your life the way you should live your life according to God's word. And in 2022, you want to make a decision to live your life according to his will. If you'd like to recommit your, your life to Christ again, please stand up, stand up. We're going to pray. Take of all wonderful love he has promised. Promise for you and for me. Come home, come home. You are weary, come home. Let's kneel down and Elder Shanti will pray a special prayer for us. Let's all kneel. Gracious Father in heaven, Lord, I thank we all with confidence and can say we have heard a voice from the Lord. Father, we felt your presence here this morning. Your Holy Spirit has spoke to each and every one of our hearts and has declared, this is the way. Walk ye in it. Father, we're so thankful that even now today, January 8th, 2022, that your Holy Spirit is still working on the lives of men and women. Even though we are bombarded every single day with distractions, with social media, with streaming videos and TV shows, with Hulu and Netflix and Amazon Video, your Holy Spirit still is in the saving business. Father, Angels in heaven are rejoicing over the decisions that for the people who came up this morning to say, yes, this is the year 2022 that I am fully going to commit my life and surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, may that be the prayer of each and every one of us. We may have failed through the month of 2021, but in 2022, we yearn to put our faith and our confidence and our hope and our life in your hands. Bless the ones who have come forward. Give them the strength, Lord, to stand for you in the days ahead. Give us all the necessary strength, Lord. No matter if we were baptized 50 years ago, we still need your power and presence in our lives to defeat our common enemy. An enemy who has nothing to do but to seek and to destroy your people. Father, bless those who are in the congregation this morning or who are viewing by streaming who are still in the valley of decision. As we just sang, Lord, may they hear your soft, tender voice. Come home. Why do you linger? Earnestly, Lord, you're pleading with each and every one of us to come home, come home where you belong. 
This world has nothing for you, so please come home. Guide us in the days ahead. And may each and every one of us, Lord, be a positive influence to the ones who came forward this morning and said, yes, I will give my life to Christ. Bless each and every one of us. And may this ye be the year, Lord, that you come back in the clouds of glory and take all of your people home that we may dwell with you forever and ever and ever throughout all the ceaseless ages. Thank you for your love and your mercy. And thank you for the blessed hope that we have in you that one day you will come again. We ask these things, Lord, and we sincerely pray these things in Jesus' most holy and powerful and wonderful and righteous name. And all God's people said, amen and amen. Guys, you can sit here. I'll talk to you for a few seconds. And you can see us after church. If you still want to make that commitment, probably you are shy. You can still come in and we'll talk to you and prepare you for baptism.